So hey, my name is Warrior Guitarist, my bet's not made. But today I want to leave you, uh, bring you guys a very long-winded, and I cannot stress that enough, but exhaustive guide to sieging, okay? And I say the, I use the adjectives that I do because I need to stress that this will be a long video and that if you do not like long videos, that I recommend that you do either one of two things. The first is you go away. And I'm not trying to be a jerk, I'm just trying to be serious. Like, if you do not like my long formatted videos, that's totally fine. Um, I'm just letting you know this is a long formatted video and there's not much that I'm going to do about that to compensate for your needs. If you like information to come in five to ten minute bursts, because that's all you have time for, then I, just simply put, you probably shouldn't watch this kind of video, okay? That doesn't mean that I'm trying to tell you to go fuck yourself or anything. I'm just saying, like, instead of leaving a mean comment saying my videos are too long, how about you just go away, you know? Or, here's another option that is a little bit less mean than that, is you go to the little settings button on, on, on videos, and then you hit speed, and then you watch my videos at 1.5 times speed. Watch this, watch this. This is my normal voice. Ready for this? Hello, I'm wired. My bed is not made. My bed's not made, okay. We're gonna listen to that same clip. Hello, I'm wired. My bed is not made. See, it's like, uh, it's 50% smoother and 50% quicker. So that way, in case you value your time um, and have a keen attention span, one that is adequate enough to be able to listen to me talk at 1.5 times with normal speed, then go for it. Um, that's how I watch a lot of videos, and it saves me a lot of time. So anyways, I'm Wire Guitars, and like I said, we're making a long video here for sieging. That's what that's what the topic of today is. I'm going to try to start a series of videos where I'm talking about archaic topics of Dota that I do not normally see when I'm searching for guides. And so what that includes, but is not limited to, is when to buy a gem, um, when to buy a rapier, uh, sieging, obviously, as we talked about, cryptic mechanics of lane control, like vision, and the importance of putting like a mid lane ward down at like the zero minute mark. Um, let's see, uh, the value of like picking up certain, like give and take efficiency values, like why you should go take up, uh, pick that bounty rune up. Um, just weird things that I don't see too many people like you know weird things that are kind of hard to write guides on but like probably they deserve them because they they have their own sort of certain like quirks in the game like the, the the topic that I'm gonna talk about today is probably something that you guys have all dealt with in some form or fashion um, but just haven't really uh, thought about it when you're doing it unless you're like thinking of it from a high high uh, like a higher level of thinking you know like uh, you've all sieged before in Dota 2 I guarantee it you just haven't really thought about it probably when you've done it and hopefully the things that I can the values that I can impart um, on your Dota 2 play today can help you better acclimate yourself as a player towards the mindset of we need to go take tier three. How are we going to do it? How does our team take those tier three towers down, get the racks, and get out safely and not lose too many heroes in doing so? So first and foremost, we're going to look at some heroes. Um, I got a hero, uh, fucking Baganza over here, and then I got a symposium of heroes over here that are pretty good at doing it. But we're going to look at some heroes, and as we're looking at these heroes, please keep in mind that I didn't make any sort of particular order of importance for these heroes. Um, I, I, I just want to, like, so I'm not trying, when I'm going to explain the things that I'm going to explain about these heroes, I'm not going to explain these things from the perspective of greatest to least or least to greatest. Do not think that as I'm describing these heroes, I'm trying to say that one is better than the other. Although, that being said, I may say that throughout my description of these heroes. I'm just trying to, like, I, I just, you know, with a friend, I talked about a bunch of heroes that I thought were pretty good at, at sieging, uh, listed them all out, um, and, and here we are, okay? I'm going to start over here in this bunch. Uh, these are like kind of the carries that we could immediately think of, although there's probably more. I don't include Bloodseeker. I didn't include Bloodseeker in here, but Bloodseeker certainly has his merits when he's trying to take a tier 3 tower. He's got a big thing that he throws on the ground, you know, and it like pops up and it does a silence, so he kind of zones out an area. But just in general, um, when, I, when I'm when i thinking of carry heroes, by the way, I'm Earth Spirit. You guys know me as an Earth Spirit main. 775 games and counting almost an Earth Spirit, but like... You know, let's be realistic. Earth Spirit's not the best sieger in the world. Unless he has like a blink, blink axe and he can blink onto somebody, uses his uh, enchant remnant, and then kick somebody away uh, back into his team to kill him. Earth Spirit's not that good of a sieger. So just to get that out of the way, Earth Spirit's kind of a cool hero. You know, you can do some cool things with him and, you know, whatever. You know, fancy, you know, uh, 7K plays, you know, I'm a god. But uh, you're not actually that good of a tower pusher if you're an Earth Spirit. Just to be clear on that so there's no confusion, because I'm sure that if I did not tell you guys this, you would see this hero pool and be like, Wired, where's Earth Spirit? 
He's not that good at tower pushing, okay? He doesn't hit buildings that well. But these heroes, either they do hit buildings well, um, or they do something else that makes them good at sieging and lending those, themselves to a siege. And by the way, when I we're talking about sieging, we're talking about one of two things, not the third thing, which is split pushing. We're talking about sieging or defending from a siege. We're not talking about split pushing. And that's an important distinction to be made here because I didn't include Nature's Prophet in this list. Um, his ability to siege and take tier threes is probably pretty decent. In fact, we'll throw him in here. Check it out. Because he... I guess I should probably include Enigma. No, just assume that summoning-based units are probably pretty good. I didn't include them in here because I was thinking about, like, zoning. Um, and, and I guess if this was a more comprehensive... Yeah, we're just going to throw him in here. And I may as well throw a Tidehunter. All right. We're just trying to focus on purely sieging. Um, there's reasons why those heroes, such as Enigma, Tidehunter, and uh, other heroes that like Earthshaker can be good at sieging, especially Earthshaker because he has his fissure, so he throws down a big fissure, he blocks off a creep wave, and I will include Earthshaker here because of that alone. But like, the reason why I'd include, oh wait, you have to, I think it's Earth. Yeah. The reason why I'd be specifically keen on including an Earth, an Earthshaker into this list, but not an Enigma, is because Enigma is kind of a, he's like a tier two or tier three tower, or tier th tier two or tier one tower seizure. Uh, Eidolons kind of lose a bit of their effectiveness against tier three towers when they basically get like one shot by a tower hit. And um, like they're an extra body to tank, but also they, they do kind of feed the enemy a little bit. Um, they don't do that much, like they're ranged heroes or units, so they're gonna like miss uphill and shit. Um, I, they're, they're good, but like Enigma's main strength against the tier 3 tower is his black hole. It's like, hey, I can blink in at any time and cause a really good fight. But he can't like stop a tower, you know, he's not like a faceless void. Like, faceless void jumping into a tier 3 tower is probably better because he can stop the tower from attacking, you know. Um, I don't know. Enigma has a strength. These are the heroes that I, that I could currently comprise, and I'll let you guys make modifications as you feel. Um, like are necessary in the comment section. So anyways, without further ado, let's talk about these heroes. Juggernaut, he stands out as like one of the quintessential, one of the quintessential carry heroes, and I know I said uh, I wouldn't try to value importance, but I, I will say if you're picking Juggernaut on a pushing lineup, you're doing something right, because Healing Ward is one of the best pushing skills in the game, right? And it doesn't even hit creeps, isn't that crazy? But basically what Healing Ward does, and it's kind of weird, I can't move it, um, is it heals your it makes your team always ready to fight at any given situation no matter how much harass they throw at you right uh, if they have an ancient ap apparition and like a coddle and they're blasting down your waves and hitting your face for like 400 damage or some crap like that every time a wave comes up all you got to do is back off with your team throw a healing ward down on the ground and wait anywhere from five to ten seconds and most of your team is completely healed back up and ready to go hit that tower again all right jug as a carry hero is a very 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 weird one because he brings so much more to a pushing team as a carry hero um than any other carry that i can think of generally speaking off the top of my head which is weird because you know we got some other cores here um so yeah, that's like Jug's main strength. You could say his other strength is that he lends himself pretty good to dives with Omni Slash and the ability to go Magic Immune with Blade Fury, but his main strength is Healing Ward, and that's generally speaking, um, as a Jug player, you should be thinking, why would I draft Jug? Oh, it's because I can, uh, unlike any other carry hero in the game, it's because I can, you know, bring a lot to my team when it comes to pushing. Um, it's one of the reasons he's not like the best late game scaling carry in the game. Anyways. Weaver, uh, I don't need to talk too much about this because I think his strength um, as a pushing hero is pretty obvious, right? The swarm is just like one of the best pushing abilities in the game. Uh, you throw it in a creep wave and it like makes the creep wave stand still for like years. It also makes the creep wave attack beetles instead of the um, creeps, so they're not or your heroes, you know, so they're like you know not killing. They're not they're not doing damage to you guys, so it's really good for like especially those early game pushes when like creep damage is still really relevant. Uh, relevant. Um, it goes a very far distance. Right? So, um, heroes that, like, stand way far back here, like the tower is right, like, right here, right? Or, I don't, I wish I had a blink here. Let's just give bots item blink. Um, the weaver's right here, and, like, he's trying to siege, and, like, there's, like, like an earth shaker back here. You know, you can, like, position yourself right here, throw the beetles, and watch. They'll hit the creep wave, and then the earth shaker right here popping his blink dagger. It's really good. Like, look at how far that was that they just traveled. And, um... Just in general, like, he's a ranged hero, which is generally, generally when you're trying to look at sieging heroes, you kind of want the, these common attributes of, like, I can hit towers from a range. That's a very powerful thing. Geminate attack makes his auto attacks twice as, as effective, essentially, when it comes to, like, sieging compared to, like, some other sieging heroes in the game. 
um, he's rather elusive. So like he can sit here and be a meat tank for the tower, right? And then like when it comes like time to go and the enemies are about to engage on him, he can just boop back to like relatively full health and run away if he gets a little bit too afraid of the situation, you know, and let, like let like more core heroes, not more core, more beef soaky heroes come up and take the front line while he runs away and plays it safe. So that's Weaver. Um, yeah, just a good good carry here. We'll bring him back here. Whoops, that's not Weaver. We'll bring Weaver back here just for sake of the situation. Get over here so you don't die. Um, uh, Death Prophet. I, I, uh, similar to Weaver, but I think even more obviously so. Uh, Death Prophet needs very little explanation for her siege pushing. Uh, it really just comes down to Crypt Swarm and her ulti. Uh, and emphasis on her ulti because like this thing is insane. I, I don't want to even like go up to a tower because I'm afraid that it'll kill it, but we'll do it anyways. Spirits. I've never actually spammed Blink on a Death Prophet. Okay, they just come back out of her face. But like, look at this damage. Like if you attack the tower, like it's chewing through backdoor protection almost. Not, eh. Not really. It kind of is. I could actually probably destroy this tower if I had enough health, if I just keep spam refreshing it. Um, but yeah, like, what's strong about this ability, on top of the fact that it hits towers and decimates towers, is that... Let me just drain some life back here so we don't die. Um, what's strong about this ability is that it's, like, an amazing team fighting ability, too. So, like, whenever you want to, right, you can, you can switch from, hey, I'm hitting your tower, to, hey, I'm hitting your face, right? With an exorcism, you are everything any sieging team would ever want. You are the front line, you are the tower damage, you are the team fight damage, and that's basically what your team wants from a sieging hero. Um, there's a few downsides to her, and one of them is that she's time reliant, or cooldown reliant, I guess I should say. You know, she has like a 90 second downtime without Octarine, where she just kind of has to say like, fuck, dude, I can't do much. But, you know, you, you put that... Um, you put that to one side, you put the idea that, like, it's physical damage, so, like, high armor t targets aren't going to feel as much of the burn. Um, it's it's probably better in the end that it's physical damage, because, like, if it was magic damage, it could be reduced heavily. Like, you know, Pike doesn't do much against her. That's one of the um, positive aspects to her as a hero. But, you know, there are negatives to the fact that it is physical damage. One of them, I mean, you could also argue, I, I can't remember how Vanguard works with it, but I know that, like, just generally speaking, like, Terrorblade and Morphling and stuff, when they get heroes that get high armor kind of don't necessarily need to worry too, too much about her as a hero. But... Um, I, they still do a lot of damage, and see, she overall, this, you know, she's a very, very big threat to, uh, to lineups that lack the amount of tower defense that can count, that you can use to counteract her amount of tower offense. So, there's, um, Death Prophet, you've got Gyro, Gyro is a zoner, right, he takes control of his zone, he just, you know, in the case of a uh, tower situation, you come over here, you flat cannon down creep waves, we can wait for one to spawn, but basically you attack the tower with flat cannon, It you hear that noise, that's flat cannon to auto attacks, it, we'll just wait for four seconds, it's not a big deal. You use flat cannon, you walk up to the tower, you attack the tower when the creep wave is here. Oh crap, I didn't hurt through her. You attack the tower, it does damage to the tower, and then flat cannon decimates the wave when you have items. This is also assuming like I didn't give this gyro items. But it destroys the wave, um, and you do damage to the tower at the same time. His attack range is lower than Weaver's, which is sad. He has to kind of get close, but he is still technically a ranged hero. And uh, more importantly than all of that, I would say, for his split, or for, not split pushing, for his sieging potential, is the fact that he can just ulti the tower, right? You can ulti the tower, it doesn't do damage to the tower, but it does damage to the wave if you can time it properly. Um, like I clearly cannot, and uh, um, it just zones the heroes out of the area. Like, he takes control of the zone, and uh, hopefully you're taking notice to the trend that I'm trying to list out here, because we have time to go over all of these heroes, but I don't think it ne should be necessary. So what Medusa does, if we're going to move on to Medusa, um, she has basically everything Gyro has, but like better in some cases, but it, it takes longer for Medusa to become relevant in, in this respect. So similar to Flat Cannon, she can just auto attack the tower. Kind of unlike Flat Cannon, it, it has the downside of like having a maximum number of targets, but you just auto attack the tower. You have longer range than Gyro, and you attack the creep wave at the same time as you're attacking the tower, which is really nice. Um, um, for further, uh, what would you call it? Um, uh, fuel to the poison here. You can just um, spawn creeps. And then if an enemy, say, hero is, like, right behind here, you can, like, throw a mystic snake out and then it'll, like, drain their mana. And it's kind of a... Whoops, 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 whoops. It's kind of a poor example because it didn't actually... You can just throw, like, snakes out, you know, and it'll uh, drain mana and do a lot of damage if it's on, like, the last bounce. It's very, very helpful to have uh, heroes that can, like, d 
like when you're trying to siege push, it's very, very helpful if you can also do damage to the heroes as well as the um, tower and the waves. Because more so than doing damage to the towers and clearing the wave, you want to also be able to secure the tower for when the... Like, inevitably speaking here, if you're pushing into a tower, um, you're probably going to have a team fight. Like, there's, I'd say in 90% of cases, teams will just say, let's fight this as opposed to let's give a Rax up for free. And so you need to take that into consideration when you're sieging. You need to say, do we have enough damage to take this tower and take the enemy heroes on along with it? And uh, Medusa's answer to that is yes. I can walk up, I can ulti, I can take this tower, you know, I can focus it down. If a creep wave spawns, I can push my Q on, I can auto-attack the creep wave. I can also W the creep wave, get some mana back if it hits the range creep. Maybe if it bounces onto a hero, I'll steal their mana and uh, gain a lot more effective HP that way. I'll do a lot of damage to them that way. Um, every single one of her abilities lends her quite nicely. Like she's a tanky hero that can take the tower. She's Every single one of her abilities lends her quite nicely just taking a tower. And so I really like Medusa when it comes to sieging. Um, Morphling. You rock. Uh, mm, you rock, Venomo. But Morphling... I'm sorry, I'm doing a video. Uh, Morphling lends himself quite nicely to a siege pushing. Um, it's gonna sound boring, but it's for much of the same way that a lot of the other ranged heroes does, um, do. He's... Uh, ranged heroes that are tanky. He's tanky. He's ranged. And uh, he's got a lot of sustain. And when I say a lot of sustain, I just mean in the form of, like, he, he, I guess, this is a little bit uncanny, so I'm glad that I actually talked about how he's a little bit different. He can just, um, use his ulti on a new, oh my god, I can't control the, this is weird. I don't know why Valve, Valve, you gotta work on this shit. I can't control this illusion, but you can, you can ulti one of your allies, or you can ulti one of the enemies. That's one of my favorites, is you ulti, like, a, a viper or something like that. Um and start beating down their, their heroes when they're over there. But, like, it's got a very long cast range, by the way, just so we're clear on that. Like, this ability, look at that cast range. So you can certainly, if you get vision of them when they're back here, alt them with your ult, um, do some damage to them if they're, like, a Viper or, like, a Spectre, and you, you deteriorate, deteriorate on their sustains, which leaves your team more space to just hit the tower. But more realistically, you're going to alt your ally, you're going to send this illusion back to base, you're gonna have BOTs or something like that, and um, you're gonna sit here, hit the tower. You're gonna replicate on back to. You're gonna you're gonna clear the creep waves. You're gonna hit the tower, tank it for your team. Maybe you'll morph a bit of strength as you're tanking it, and you'll sit here and you'll still take the tower like I currently am. And then when it comes time to go back, because you're kind of getting a little low or something like that, we can demonstrate that by morphing a fuck ton of agility here. You get kind of low, just pop your ulti. You're back in base. You're healing up, and then you just um, BOTs back onto your next creep wave, and then boom, you're there with full HP. I didn't demonstrate that because I don't have bots. I don't have a I can't move his illusion back in here, but basically you'll be full HP. Hopefully you understood that and uh, you'll be you, just nice sustain nice tank ability nice flexibility as a hero He's a pretty good hero um, to have and lend himself to a siege uh, Clink's Clink's uh, has a lot of sustain similar to Morphling. He has a very a very stellar attack range at 630 That's even higher than most range heroes that have like 600 as I usually say the average He has amazing tower DPS. He has two abilities that are like super three if you count death pack What you do is um, you know, first you clear the creep wave Ah, uh, Clinks is shit at doing this. Wait, what level's my Clinks? It's 25. He just, man, he's squishy as fuck. All right. You go. What you do is you go in here. You find a creep. You suck it up when it's at full HP. And you can clear the wave. Always clear the wave. And then assuming you have like a Desolator, because Clinks loves to build Desolator. Give ah, uh, do I want to give the entire bots a Desolator? I'm gonna give all the bots a Desolator just for um, show of representation. This is what Clinks can do to a backdoor protected tier three tower. Ah, uh, fuck this shit. With a satyr. How long is my death battle? Okay, we're good. Okay. You just walk up, you strafe, and then you start beating the tower down. Look at this. This is a backdoor protected tower, and Clinks can actually break through it with strafe. Like, I'm out damaging its regen with strafe. Obviously, this is a little bit of a distorted image because, you know, you know I'm just hitting a free tower. But still, that just goes to show his DPS is amazing with death packed up and just a desolator, basically. And, you know. <laughs> Above average, average attack range. He's a pretty survivable hero in the race circumstance. He's just a great hero for sieging. So I'll move on. These heroes, I want to talk briefly about them because there's so many of them, but these are like the support-based heroes that lend themselves quite nicely with one or two of their abilities um, to either pushing, like sieging, basically, or counter-pushing or counter-sieging, you know? And so we kind of... We'll, we'll, we'll work left to right here because there's interesting interactions. We talked a bit about Earthshaker. You, um... You basically, with your Desolator Kappa, you walk over here and you just clear the creep wave. You, you prevent the creep wave from coming out. Um, or more more, amp more aptly, you prevent your uh, the enemy creep wave from going in. I guess this is more, more realistic when you're over here. You um, spawn creeps. And then you just 
uh, hopefully get it before I did. Um, you, I don't know how I'm trying to explain this. Here, let's just echo slam this shit down. Imagine the enemy creeps are trying to come into my base, okay? They're they're all just, they're strolling down here. What I'll do as an earthshaker is I'll stand I'll stand like right over here. I'll like walk over here, and then I'll just do something like this, and then I'll blink in, and then their creeps can't come in, and then my tower's sitting here getting pot shots at their creep wave as it's standing like right here. It gives your tower an extra time an extra bit of time to clear to start clearing out their creep wave and keep in mind this is an 81 minute game where two range creeps spawn every wave generally speaking um sieging is going to happen around the 30 to 35 minute mark when there's only about four to five melee creeps a wave um a catapult spawns like every other creep wave and like one range creep spawns a wave okay you're not going to have that many creeps per wave so he has the ability to effectively deny a creep wave every what 15 seconds he can pretty much permanently do this if he has permanent sustain and the enemy never bothers to stop him from doing it kind of kind of requires a bit of setup because you have to basically do something like this you kind of really need you kind of really need a blink if you want to survive after you do it because once you do it the enemy is going to be like hey what the fuck and they're going to come over here and try to kill you so you're going to have to blink out right away but you just do this and then maybe you get a little crafty you go this way this time you know you're like uh, you come over here and you boom and then you go like this but basically they just can't push up your high ground and it's super sick also if they ever do say I hypothetically just try to man fight up the high ground with like one or two creeps you just boom you know and then you boom and then you boom right uh he's he's pretty stellar i'd say at defending tier threes and we talked about enigma and tide but basically they do the same thing um tied with axe by the way uh, it's very strong tied I don't want to show it, but like Tidehunter with Axe, I don't want to show it because it means I have to spawn a Tidehunter and then I have to, I should have done it at this point, here's Create Hero, if I do this I'm going to get an Ag Aghanim Sector to tell all my heroes, I'm just going to do it anyways, anyways, Create Hero Tide, Give Bots, Item, Ultimate, Scepter, okay, this ability right here is insane for clearing creep waves, Give Bots, Item, Link, Level Bots, 25, alright, Check this shit out. Um, this is... Okay, it's like three gushes, but... I promise, um, it's on a seven second cooldown, and like it slows the creep wave too. It's an amazing ability for clearing creep waves, especially for how long it, it uh, casts out. Okay, trust me on this, alright? Tide is very, very good with an Aghanim Scepter for slowing down creep pushes, and just in general, this hero... Um, like, you know, with his ability on top of that to then just blink in a Ravage if, like, a fight ever looks good or something like that. He's pretty good, okay? He's pretty good. Enigma for much of the same reasons. Uh, Wisp. Wisp is good at sieging. He's not good at, he's, well, he's kind of good at defending against sieges, but mostly this hero shines at, def at sieging. Uh, what Wisp likes to do, and, uh, for the record, the hero that I'm gonna spawn here is not actually that good at sieging, but with a Wisp, he's pretty good. Like, Tiny. Oh, did I create a Tiny? Oh, I did. Give bots. I should just create more heroes next time, so I don't have to give my bots like five blink daggers. Look at that shit. But basically, Wisp is good at latching onto a big, a big bulky hero. Um, that's the you don't want to start linking onto like Rickies, but you get onto a tiny, you link to him, you give him overcharge, and the tiny goes and hits the tower, and we'll demonstrate that, right? Like, hopefully, we just turn his blink off. We just, you know, we get that tiny up there, and even without an Aghanim Scepter, we just turn on overcharge, and he's just like, he's sitting there, he tanks the tower, he doesn't feel that much damage himself, and he starts out DPSing, obviously I got a Wisp with a Desolator here helping his DPS, but you know, just does this stuff, maybe he'll toss a creep into it or something like that, and it does damage as well. Yeah, see, the toss also does damage, and that's why it works pretty well with tiny, but, um... Just in general, uh, Wisp, he lends himself quite well to a tower pushing scenario because he makes one one hero on your team particularly tanky and uh, able to just go and take the tower without fear um, because of his insane ability to reduce damage by 20% and then also heal the target after that with uh, Tether and his own regen items. But we'll just get Tiny out of here because I don't think Tiny is that good at defending or attacking against pushes. He's got decent wave clear, but it's like melee based and most bureau, like some heroes can outclass him. We're talking about the best or really good heroes. Pudge, one of the only things this hero does right, I think, is like a defending or attacking against sieges. What Pudge does um, in a very obscure way is he just like fucks people, right? No offense, pardon my French. He just gets into weird locations just hooks people, with an Aether Lens it's even better, into the most uncomfortable of locations ever and just like dismembers them afterwards. It's so obscenely stupid like how crazy this hero can like 
you know, turn around a game because he lands one good hook when the enemy is trying to push into a situation that they're kind of unsure of. Um, that Pudge can change games alone just by his ability to siege or counter siege, right? Um, the way that Pudge would lend to a counter siege, I say counter siege, but really it's just a get, defending against um, a tier three invasion. Uh, the way that he would lend uh, to himself to that is basically the same way. They're out here and you're just like sitting here and you're like, yo, six hearts, uh, six heart centaur. Okay, fuck that. You're like, yo, Centaur with six hearts, let me just pull you into my team. Oh my fucking god. Wire guitars. Oh my fucking god. Oh my god. Alright, there you go. You just pull the six heart Centaur or the five heart Centaur into your entire team so that he can stampede and kill them all. But more more realistically, you know, you pull like a key target into your team into a very uncomfortable position. Like hopefully it's, you know, over here or some crap like that. It's kinda it's kinda wishful thinking. Anybody that you pull is probably screwed, right? Um you don't want to be pulling tide hunters, but if you pull anybody, it's probably a good thing. And so you just pull him and they're screwed. Uh, he's really good at doing that because the hook is like, it's a weird ability. You can make a video all about it. Hey, maybe I could make a video all about it. If I was better, Pudge probably would. I've only got five five games played on the hero or so. But like, basically, you, you, it's really good in situations where people can't avoid it. And defending or attacking tier threes is one of those situations where it's kind of hard to defend uh, or to, to avoid it because you can't like... You have an you have an objective. You have something that you have to push, and and it's not like you can just sit there and you know run back to your base or something like that. Like you have to push something, so you've always got that threat. Um, disruptor, disruptor is really good for the, like those mid game team fights. I'm talking like tier ones and tier twos, where like somebody TP's in on a tower, right? And I can illustrate this, but uh, give bots item maybe boots of travel. Does that work? No. We have bots. Yeah, there we go. So, Sceptre's really good at... Let's hockey. Let's get you back here. This is awkward. Okay, let's drop you. I promise this will just take a second. Hope you're gonna get your... No, get the TP scroll. I don't want you to take this. Please drop this. Please drop this as well. Please drop this. Drop that. I don't want you to hold that. I don't want you to hold this either. Okay, good. Um, where'd my disruptor go? Okay. Here's what disruptor's good at doing. This is especially solid mid game. Somebody TPs in, right? And you're sitting here as a disruptor, and you're like off in the trees or something like that, but then you just glimpse them back to base. And then boom, their TP's wasted. And against tier threes, it's not that like strong, I guess, or whatever, because they can just walk back. But it could be very, very nice, especially if they're like trying to help their teammates because they just broke out in a fight. But mostly, when it comes to like controlling an area, an area, disruptor doesn't know better with kinetic field and a static storm. It's it's quite strong. I'll say that. Um, also, Thunderstrike gives vision. Vision's very powerful. It gives it in like an AOE too. It's not like a bounty hunter vision where it's just vision of the target. It gives a 240 vision around it, so it's a powerful ability. Plus Disruptor. Chikiro, um, gosh, I mean, again, this is one of those like, I'm getting a little bit redundant here because Chikiro does the same zoning shit, you know? It's got Macro Pyre, look at that range. Although I think Aghanim Scepter, yeah, it increases the flame length. Let's get rid of the axe because that's kind of, Distortion yeah, it increases a lot of thing, things. Uh, the length, du du the duration, the damage. Let's get a, uh, get rid of Ags. And um, wait, how long is that with Ags? What the heck? Twenty seconds. Holy crap! Without it, it's just ten damage. Two twenty-five. That's crazy. Okay. Anyways, without Ags, you throw your macro pyre on the ground. You throw your ice path. Look at that. That area is death right there. And then dual, dual, dual breath or whatever. That's kind of scary. You throw liquid fire, you can cast liquid fire on towers. It does... Whoa, 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 where's my centaurs? Uh oh I'm gonna lose this tower. That's bad. I did not want to do that. That was an accident. Let's not lose the racks. That was an accident. Didn't realize. Rip. Wish I could revive towers. Anyways. Anyways. You can cast liquid fire on towers and it reduces their attack speed. I'll show it up here. Watch the rate at which this tower is attacking me. Boom. 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 Boom, throw liquid fire. Boom. 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 Okay. Alright. And it's, I mean, it burns for five seconds, then the cooldown's four, so you can always keep it on a tower. And it also does damage over time. Overall, this ability is pretty fucking good. And uh, when it comes to tower pushing, um, 
I mean, I think it's the best auto. Uh, it's the best toggleable able toggle all toggleable toggleable. It's the best toggleable ability for siege pushing in the game. I'm not entirely sure about that. We're talking about like you know auto cast whatever madness, right? It, it's so sick that this ability can activate on towers because it takes away 50 attack speed, which is basically more than a hyperstone. Um, does 24 damage over time, which is pretty respectable because I don't think tower. I don't think magic damage gets reduced by towers. And it's got such a little cooldown. MX rank. Right, so we'll get him back here. Talk about Pudge. Venge is good. Uh, she can howl the creep wave, and then she can swap heroes um, when they're when you're pushing. So she makes your push that much safer. I guess your team's push that much safer. Also, her aura is really good. She's got a good stun. She's good for pushing. She's good for not pushing. Venge is good just in general. That's why she's like the most picked hero, most picked and banned hero in competitive. Uh, my centaur just died. That concerns me. Do I need to be concerned? I don't think I need to be concerned. I'm going to assume I do not need to be concerned. We're just going to assume that nothing bad will happen. Oh wait, I know what center that was. That's fine. Earth Spirit will fill that void. Earth Spirit, you do Centaur's job. Cool shit. Anyways, yeah, that's Venge. Don't need to talk too much about her though, I don't think. Um, Warlock. Warlock is good because of upheaval, basically. like. TLDR. Uh, uh, people, Fatal Bonds is good, but it's it's really just comes down to like, like you just walk into a creep wave, right? Well, whatever you scurry over to a creep wave, and you stop people that thing, and then like no, what hero wants to do this shit? What hero wants to do anything about this? This is sieging, and this is counter sieging. That's a bad location. This is what I'm talking about. And look at how what the fuck? Earth Spirit, do your job, man. This is why we need that center back. We got 20 seconds until the center comes back. Look at how look at how far away Warlock can travel up or cast up people. Look at how freaking far away this is, and look at how devastating this is. Watch in five seconds, it lasts for like 12. This Warlock before I used to play. What are you doing? What the frick? All right. Um, before I used to play Earth Spirit as like my position four of choice, I used to play Warlock because he, he could just, he's so sick for pushing. Look at this crap. The creep wave's not going to do anything. Any hero that walks into here is going to be slowed by a freaking whopping 84%. It's got a sticky time of 3.5 seconds, so look at that crap. Did you see how slow those motherfuckers were even after they left the, um, left the field? Um, it lasts for such a long time. You have an insane, look at that cast range. It's the same as your upheaval thing. You summon golems and they go and like pop and they do your bidding and crap. Just Warlock's pretty sick hero for pushing. Um, Fatal Bonds, like I said, it's a pretty good ability. It's got a much short, it's got a really sick cast range. It's shorter than your upheaval cast range, you know? I know upheaval is the big, it's the bee's knees. So we move on to Coddle. Coddle, I, I don't think I need to talk too much about Coddle though. Like, this is, this is obvious, right? This ability, why it's super freaking good for pushing. I can demonstrate it if you guys want. Let's get that centaur back here. Let's get you over here. But even without the centaur. Yeah. Look at this. Well, fuck. Come on, golems. I need these golems to die. This is, it's hit that late stage of the test client where it's not going to respond when I punch in a well, will, I guess. No, quit doing that. Small pierce. Okay. Just, please respond, Dota 2. I hate this test client so much. Okay, it does a lot more when the creeps haven't scaled this much, but it, it basically one-shots creep waves. It kind of got nerfed when the catapults got insane magic reduction. Or magic magic resistance because um, it's a magical ability. It used to be that this ability would like one shot catapults too, but basically your Q is insane for pushing and counter pushing. It clears waves like no other. It's like one of the best abilities in the game for clearing and holding waves. It's it's insane. Um, also with an axe you have sustain. You bring sustain. You bring heal to your team. Uh, Bat Rider, uh, Bat Rider's somewhat in the same boat as Enigma or some of those other heroes. Um, he's insane for split, or not for split. He's insane for sieging because of his ability to stand in the creep wave or what, or not in the creep wave, in the tree line or whatever the fuck have you, like wherever you want to stand, it's fine. And then like all of a sudden, you know, ooh, scary uh, enemy hero wants to come up and defend their tower, right? Right, right. I'm gonna walk over here and you just blink in. You do this. Oh my god. Hopefully it's a little bit more clean. Hopefully you have boots or whatever. You just you pull them out. 
you know, you got a four staff or whatever, you pull them out into the middle of your team, look at that distance from here to here, um, you make it so that you force the issue of, hey, we're pushing your towers, and if you want to do something about it, we're going to kill you guys. Because Batrider guarantees a kill on somebody. You, know, you got fire flying crap like that, you flam over the, like, if they're sitting right here, and they're, like, say hypothetically, they're a, a ranged hero that can clear waves pretty well, like a coddle, and they're sitting right here channeling their blast. You flick over here and just pull them out over the side. It's not a big deal. You know, when the thing ends, you're spamming stick, sticky na napalm on them, and you're, you're pushing them and shit with your fire, your cask, or whatever, your, what's it called? Flame break? It's good crap. He forces issues. That's why he's strong. Oracle, Oracle's sustain. That's, like, the big thing that Oracle does. Also, he makes somebody... Yo, what the fuck? You... You suck. I take you away from your job for one second and you give up on me. Alright, we're gonna be losing... We're gonna be like... Megas are gonna be coming into my tower soon here. But... Do I need to worry about this here? I need to worry about this, that's for sure. Who was I on about? While I'm clearing creep waves over here. We're gonna talk about them. We're gonna talk about. We talked about Oracle. Yeah, yeah, Oracle. Oracle. Ironically, we just got done talking about Batrider. Where do you need to be? You need to be right here, and then you need to be over here. What's your cooldown for? Yeah, there we go. Um, ironically, we went from talking about Oracle uh, to Batrider to Oracle because Oracle is like one of the hardest Batrider counters in the entire game. Oracle ca purges off Batrider's flaming lasso, and I don't want to test that using my centaurs because if I do, I know I'm going to lose another um, barracks. Why is my middle barracks under attack? You should not be attacking barracks. You should be clearing creep waves. You should be standing right there, and then you should be standing right here, and then you should just not attack barracks at all. Um, but Oracle brings sustain. He, you know, he damages your allies, but really it's actually a heal. And check that shit out. They get healed up super hardcore. You can alt them to snapshot their HP, but it's really, as I've talked about in my Oracle guide, it's really an insane healing mechanism. Doubles the regen. You know, they sit there, they, they're tanking the tower. It's like nine seconds. They're sitting there tanking the tower, and then boom, they heal at the end, usually because you're a good Oracle player, and you heal them the whole time. You know, you sit there, oh, what the fuck? Oh my god, Oracle, you're so bad. Oracle Kun. Oracle Kun, Simpei Sukun. You sit there and you alt them. Look at that freaking shit. Dude, this guy could go tank this easy camp for nine whole seconds, and I guarantee he'd heal to full HP. Look at this. I guarantee it. Look at this or This easy camp sitting here doing 28 damage. Now this motherfucker's full HP, you know? And I don't know. Oracle's pretty good at the tier threes. For sustain. He's much the same reason that, um, like, an Omni Knight would be good, and we can talk about Omni. You know, Omni makes somebody invincible, just like Oracle. You just make somebody invincible, you give them all the sustain in the world with your purification, you know? You make them immune to tower damage with this bull crap, you know what I mean? Uh, Omni Knight's good. Or some, you know, if you want to get all Japanese on, on somebody's bitch ass. Alright. Um, Beastmaster. I don't think I need to talk about Beastmaster. You, you have insane vision with the Hawk. All right, and again, why can't I control summoned units of heroes that are not my main hero? But you have summoned units, you have insane vision with the Hawk. You uh, <clears throat> have an aura that gives five, I think, attack speed less than a frickin' Hyperstone. Check out Hyperstone. You ever, you ever buy a Hyperstone on somebody just casually, 55? This gives 10 less attack speed to everything in the area. That's you, that's your hero, you, or your hero allies, your hero summons, your creeps, your necro units. Like, it's, it's a lot of a frickin' attack speed that you're giving to everything. And um, you have a freaking wave clearing ability on wild axes. And you have an insane lockdown ability that pushes other people away and slows them for 50% of their movement and attack speed slow for four seconds. Like, it's crazy. You just, like, you sit there and you push on, on somebody. You, you run up on their, on their trap house, you know? You're like, yo, thoughts, what's up? I'm here with, like, all my freaking, I got all the vision, I got my hawks, and then if you want to come fuck with me... Well then, let me just yell at your thought ass. He's bah, and they can't shit. They can't attack your shit. They want to spawn their creeps in your base. You just throw axes at them and you clear the creep wave. He's super good at pushing. Don't underestimate him. Tinker's a weird one. Um, Tinker's not that good at defending against pushes. By the way, um, let's talk about defending against pushes. He's good at defending against pushes. You're good at defending against pushes. Um, you're good at defending against pushes, but you're a lot better, better at providing to pushes. Oracle provides a lot more to a push than he does defending against a push, although that's not to say that he's bad at defending tier threes, because Oracle is amazing at, like, ending dives, and that's what you're looking for. Like, Omni Knight and Oracle are, like, supreme at ending dives. Like, if people are trying to dive on your heroes and kill them before they die themselves so that they can kill them, get out, and not die, 
Um, well, Oracle's like, yo, hope you have nine extra seconds to sit around and hit my heroes before I heal them up by, like, 2,000 HP. Um, no. Like, Oracle's just as good at defending against, um, uh, defending against dives, but he's just not that good at defending against tier three, like, uh, de defending against sieging. He's good at defending against dives, just not good at defending against sieging. He's good at providing to sieging, not because he sieges, but because he provides to the siegers, if that makes sense. So I guess he's not really good at sieging. He's, he's a good provider to the siege. But... Yeah, that's him, and that's where he and or, um, Omni Knight stands. Although Omni Knight can nuke the wave down with purification, Oracle can't actually do that. I mean, Fortune's End is a pretty shitty nuke when it comes to nuking waves down. But um, that's a little besides the point. Um, Beastmaster is much better at sieging than he is at defending against sieges. But that's not to say that he's bad at defending against sieges because he can still co clear the waves with wild axes and he can still provide insane vision to find the initiators with this crap. It's just that the the aura means a lot less when you're trying to defend against sieges because like you're not you don't care about your creeps when you're, you you care about destroying their creeps not keeping your creeps alive when you're trying to defend against the siege but that's not to say that your ulti isn't still amazing so don't write don't write beastmaster off or anything like that he's he's pretty good he's just better at sieging arc warden it's not the best either and honestly if i was going to include arc warden in the list i definitely should have an enigma all right all right fuck it great hero enigma great hero Tight hunter. All right, all right. I already got a tight hunter. Right. If I'm gonna have freaking um, Orc Warden here just for his W, which makes your towers immune, which is pretty damn good, but it also makes your units Im like not immune, just 100% evasion. Right. It's a good ability, but it's got a very long cooldown and it only lasts for five seconds, which is still pretty good. But like you know, and you can create your Tempest Double, which can do the same. So you can essentially have 10 seconds. And again, I wish I could control this unit so that I could show them Valve, but whatever. Right. You can you can create this thing. You can have a, essentially 10 seconds of evasion every 50 seconds. Um, so it's like a one, it's like a twenty percent um, uptime or whatever. But like, it's super freaking good because it's it, it also increases your attack speed. So you come up with your whole team and your trap house, and you're like, "Yo, team, let's attack really quick." And they're like, "Okay, our warden." And then you guys attack the tower, and the tower doesn't do any damage to you. I can demonstrate that right now. Look at it. The tower's sitting here doing damage to me. I throw my W down. It's not doing damage to me. Now let me demonstrate how it also increases your pushing ability. You're sitting here, you're pushing, you're doing damage with your death slider. You throw this down on the ground. Hey, look, I'm attacking faster. See the projectiles? They're attacking faster. And do this exact same thing when the creeps are trying to hit your tower. Um, I want to demonstrate this, but I don't want to go through the trouble of getting these creeps all the way to my tower. I guess I could just like lead them this way. I'm not going to do this because it's going to take years and you guys are going to get bored if I care. try to do this with every single hero. I just throw a bunch of spark rates down and destroy this wave. Basically, just know that you make creeps immune to tower shot. That you give your creep, it gives everything in the bubble 100% evasion, which includes your creeps, um, allied heroes, and buildings within. Wait, 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 I take that back. It does not give creeps, it just gives buildings and heroes. So you're significantly less at providing to a push than you are at defending against one. Because you defending it, I mean, that does not, it's not to say that you're bad at def, like de, um, providing, um, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Let me just hold all here. No, yeah. Attack speed bonuses to allied heroes and buildings within. Great. It grants evasion and attack speed bonuses to allied heroes and buildings within. So I assume this does not apply at all to creeps. So what this means is he's he's good at pushing, like really good at pushing still, because you can make somebody immune to, you can just say, hey, go up and attack that tower. I promise it won't do damage to you. And that's true, because you're going to give it 100% evasion. But um, when it comes to defending against pushes, you have more merit, because it's like you make, an, you make a tower attack quicker and you give the tower immunity... Um, uh, he's good at both. Really, ultimately, he's good at both. And the fact that I'm breaking it down to this like micro level is kind of a, um, um, unimportant because he, he is good at both, ultimately speaking. Right? And the Tempest Double, like I said, like it increases the uptime on all of your shit. So like when you're trying to do some crazy shit with one, you can do some crazy shit with both. It's, it's super good shit. How are we doing? Are we keeping the longest? All right. So we get to like the sustain heroes again we've got dazzle you know you give sustain to your entire team and stuff like that he's also good because like you you tell your team to man up you give them weave that was with an agon let's go away yeah you give them weave they get like insane armor i didn't know the weave stacks that's actually quite insane that weave stacks <laughs> that's great all right that's pretty fucking ridiculous Look at this shit. All right, uh, you don't give them this many weaves, but you give them a lot of weaves, so you increase their physical damage mitigation ridiculously, hopefully not by 85%, but, like, you're going to get them up into that, like, 50% range, even the squishier supports, so, which, you know, towers do physical damage, so it's pretty sick to just be able to say, hey, team, go man up, go fight that tower. I, I, didn't, I did not know that weaves... That's insane, that weave stacks. God, this ulti is so underrated. It also gives vision. I don't know. Um, but, yeah... 
you, you tell your team to go man up for the next 24 seconds, and it's, you know, it's a low enough cooldown. It's 40 seconds. I mean, that, like, every time a wave comes, you can weave, so, because it's waves every 30 seconds. So, like, with a 10-second downtime, like, you can just tell your team, like, hey, let's man up. Uh, it's pretty it's pretty good and very, very much an underrated ability when it comes to sieging. But mainly you're used to stop dives and provide sustain. And, you know, you can also enable dives with Shallow Grave, so you're pretty good at sieging. You're pretty good at tower pushing. Um, Pugna, Pugna's really great because of uh, his Nether Ward. You throw a Nether Ward down, um, hopefully somewhere. It's got an insane attack range. 1600, that's insane. That's like a Ward Vision range. So like, does it even show it? Does it show it? This is like all the way over here. That this, this Ward's gonna, it's like a screen away. It's insane. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna come over here to this tower, and you're gonna be like, yo, I'm gonna put a Ward down, and then like, uh, we can probably see when the Creep Wave spawns, it would affect these creeps, right? It doesn't show it because it only affects heroes. It would affect these creeps over here, and it's, it's quite ridiculous. Also, you can clear creep waves by doing this. You just throw your nether. Is it another bless? Yeah, you throw your nether bless on the ground. And this affects buildings too, so check this shit out. Can't do this too many times, otherwise, I'm gonna destroy the racks. But look, we destroyed that building. Oh shit, I almost destroyed ours. You know, it's a pretty. It's a pretty crazy ability that it affects uh, buildings too. For like, what, 33% of the value? Deals half damage to structures. Um. Important things to note, though, about Pugna, right? Um, his ranges, especially on Nether Blast, kind of short. Like, I think this actually has a respectable range, right? What is it? It's respectable. Nether Blast is kind of a is, is an iffy ability, right? If you're trying to, like, this is, like, if the tower's right here, right? To hit it at the very tippy top, I think that's the tippy top. Here's the, here's the tippy. You have to get up this close. And Pugna has, like, the w one, the second lowest strength gain in the game. So you're never going to be tanky enough to just be like, yo, man, let me just go up into five heroes' grill and just throw out my nether blast. Like, it's going to be a sketchy, sketchy, sketchy situation when you're Pugna and you're trying to do this. But if you can get away with it, it's pretty, it's solid damage. It's like, you know, 175 damage that you're doing against the tower. Um, Kuka, he's got insane, uh, huge, like, abilities. He clear waves, uh... At max rank. At max, like, just read Ghost Ship if you want to know anything about it um, and what it does, because I can't sit here and, like, uh, I guess I will. Basically, it's an amazing ability to clear waves. It's an amazing ability to enable team fights. It gives movement speed, which is really sick. It gives Rum um, the buff, which um, makes it so the 50% of all incoming damage is dealt delayed over the course of a duration that is preset, so it's like 10 seconds. I think after 10 seconds, the damage is dealt for seven seconds afterwards or some crap like that. I don't necessarily know how it works, but what I do know is that the, uh, the impact delay is 2.7 seconds. So I assume what would happen is you throw this thing out and then all damage that gets dealt towards the hero, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know how the damage, I don't, it's, w fuck it. it just ignore that aspect of the ability, even though it's very important, right? Just know that, like, um, he can clear waves and controls, control areas with a very, very large range. It's pretty sick, you know? Um, you bring a lot to providing two pushes, but um, also to defending against, siege, like, siege. When I say pushes and stuff like that synonymously. Like, you clear creep waves with Torrent and um, Tidebringer very well. Um, and you catch people out, similar to Disruptor does with Xmark, um, very well. But, like, most importantly, like, just overall, you, you control zones, just like ever, most other seizures in the game that we've talked about here. Um, and you just, you lend yourself quite well to the ability to just, like, lock down an area and be like, yo, don't fuck with that area, enemy team. So, I think that's, like, all these heroes. Venom answer? Did we talk about Venom? I don't think we talked about it. All right, Venom. Um, wards do a lot of damage to, uh, to non-hero units. We'll just, we'll demonstrate that over here. Where's the Venom? Right. This is like an unreal amount of words, but look at this. These are creeps that have been that have held the test of time, right? And then, uh, 110 minutes in-game timer is like a lot, but like creeps, they uh, wards do right. Max rank wards, they do 38 damage, but that's like piercing or whatever. I don't know what the damage type is, but they do 50% bonus damage to non-hero units. I think non-hero, non-building units. So, like, even though this is a lot of wards, right, they're doing pretty sizable damage to creeps. And, you know, on top of that, they have your Ebola, they, they slow their attacks, or they, they slow their movement speed, and they do a slight DOT. Like, they're pretty good for pushing. The the nicest thing about um, Venomancer that puts them into, like, Ancient Apparition category, which Ancient Apparition should also be on this list. In fact, here, frick it. Frick it, you know, frick it. Frick it, boys. Great hero, Ancient Apparition. Yeah. Um, the nice thing about Venom... That, like I said, oh fuck. 
These creeps smack here. Okay. Don't die. Ah, fuck. Alright, let's create another ancient apparition. Alright, sick. So the, the sick thing about Venno that puts him into Ancient Apparition t uh, territory is that Venno can just like walk up to a certain area of the map and just be like, yo, here's that. And that does like 1200 some damage without eggs. Obviously I have an axe, but it does like 1200 damage, not lethal of course, um, to heroes in the area. Which, I mean, you know, it gets reduced or whatever by magic damage, but like all the same, or by magic resistance, but all the same, it does an insane amount of magic damage to heroes that are uh, subsept or er, su su whatever su subjected to it, which means he hurts the sustain of a group, or I guess he doesn't hurt the sustain, but he, he hurts the ability for a group to push because he does so much damage to that group. You combo that with the fact that like with an aether you can do some pretty good damage at a range with your gale, and like suddenly if they don't have freaking five mechs on their team, the mech doesn't need five non-stacking mechs on their team or five stacking mechs on their team, which isn't possible. Um, they're gonna have to keep going back to base, and they're you know, that's never that's not what you want to do as a sieging team. You want to sit there and push towers. You don't want to have to constantly go back to base. And that's like every hero that I can think of that um, you know was on this list. Obviously, there's you know more heroes that like I said in niche ways maybe interact pretty well with sieging, but this is just like a you know a small compilation of heroes that add themselves that lend themselves quite well to a siege. Um, and like I said, I wanted to cover this topic because it is kind of a little, little, little out there as a topic in Dota 2. I don't think a whole lot of people think about sieging and how it interacts with the game. Like, they do it. You probably do it every single game in some form or another, but you probably don't think about it when you do it, and that's why I want to talk about it because, you know, hopefully we can better acclimate you guys to picking heroes in your games that siege towers and, you know, just generally don't give a fuck about Tier 3 um, defenses uh, well, I guess, if that makes any sense. Um, because it is, it's one of the, like, the most, um, I guess tenuous is what Ball said. It's like one of the most, it's one of the most timorous acts, acts that you're going to do in a game, right? Outside of, like, taking Roshan or another high priority objective, like, even potentially taking, like, a tier, like, the decision between, um, I don't know, staying in lane when you're at 50% HP or going back to base, like, that can be quite the timorous decision, but, like, at, like, there's nothing more scary that a team has to do at, like as a group to secure a victory in a game of Dota 2 than pushing high ground because there's the vision aspect, the evasion aspect of it that you get when you're trying to attack uphill. Like There's so many aspects that come down to trying to push high ground that people don't really think about too much, but they're, they're, they're very clear and vivid. Like 2 and 3k players don't think about these kinds of things, but they come into play so often when you're trying to push high ground that honestly, that's one of the reasons why Roshan is in the game. It's one of the reasons why the secret shop is in the game. It's because um, turtling is something that is potentially like it, it I mean, it's very powerful, right? You need things like, you know, the Secret Shop and Roshan to pull teams out of their base and make it so that, hey, you can't just sit on your Tier 3 towers um, until, you know, two hours in the game and, and until all five of your cores on your team can get farmed and you can just walk down the map with five rapiers and end the game, right? You need to have a strategy put into, into place um, as a team, and you need to work around the elements that are given to you, such as Roshan, such as denying like the map vision and stuff like that, um, to be able to secure an early victory against a team that has more cores than you. Um, because Tier 3 tower defense is a very powerful thing that some teams draft around. Some teams draft around giving up all of their t outer towers in, o in order to just hold Tier 3s and get farm so that you can eventually outscale your opponents. And I mean, that's a very, very real thing that happens in a lot of my games is I'll just get outdrafted when it comes to um, cores and I'm and not outdrafted, but our, my team won't push or I won't push or whatever the fuck you want to say. I'm not trying to blame game. I'm just saying that um, we won't push when we need to and we'll lose the game because we got outscaled because they sat on their tier threes when they were the best. Um, they sat on the defensive structure that they were strongest at defending and they didn't give it up because they played it correctly. And so hopefully you can use some of these tips, some of these heroes, some of the conversation that we had today, some of the dialogue that we had to um, step your game up to the next level, if you will. Um, like I said, I want to make you know kind of videos in this format where I talk about sort of archaic aspects of Dota 2 that maybe not a whole lot of people think about too much, such as you know 
sieging, such as you know knowing when to buy a gem, etc. So forth. Um, I want to talk about these kinds of kinds of things more often because whenever I go to the search bar of YouTube, I don't look up you know Earth Spirit Guide six point six. I look up you know the weird things like you know Gem Guide Dota two, and I don't find those kinds of things. So I figure, why don't I just do a bunch of research about the topic and try to provide a guide so that other people don't have to have the same amount of curiosity that is unsatiated as I did. So, anyways, that concludes this. Uh, if you have any questions, comment below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and I uh, appreciate it. See you guys later.